Hey, today uh, we're going to look at the beginning of Jonah. We're kicking off our uh, multi-video series on the book of Jonah. And today we're going to focus on just the first few verses which deal with the call to Jonah. God's call to him and the tension between God and Jonah, between Jonah's desire and God's desire. And of course, the tension we experience in our own lives, sometimes compared with what God desires for us. So hopefully you enjoy the video. Hey, it's good to see all of you today. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, as we uh, take a look, uh, again, we're looking at Jonah uh, for a, a few of these upcoming videos. And, and to start with, um, we're going to take a look at the first part of Jonah, actually just the first few verses of Jonah. Uh, and this is where we get the call of Jonah. And so you'll notice what happens with Jonah and, and a little bit of background with Jonah. So Jonah was a prophet. He was a prophet up in the northern kingdom. Uh, so he was up in the northern part of Israel, a little background uh, back in the early monarchy uh, for Israel. You had uh, before the monarchy, you have the judges. After the judges, the people say, hey, we want a king. Uh, and so uh, you get the first king who is Saul. Um, after Saul, we've got David. After David, we've got Solomon. But because of Solomon and his uh, uh, unfaithfulness to um, the covenant, he actually has the kingdom uh, taken away from his children. Uh, and so that's where the kingdom is divided. So you get the northern kingdom, a lot of times uh, it's called Israel. So if you read through the prophets, Israel refers to uh, the northern kingdom. Southern kingdom uh, is uh, Judah. And so uh, Jonah was a prophet in the northern kingdom, and he had a nice plush call. Um, and so he was there living in the palace. Um, he was prophesying to the king, uh, probably living it up. And all of a sudden, God comes to him, and God tells him, Hey, I got a new job for you. I need you to go all the way to Tarshish. Uh, no, actually, that's where he flees to. I need you to go to Nineveh uh, to go and to preach my message to them that they need to repent. And Jonah says, I don't want to do this. And so instead of going over and up, to Nineveh, he actually goes down to Joppa, tries to hop on a boat there, and runs away towards Tarshish. And it's interesting because when we look at this book of Jonah, and the book of Jonah is really a book about repentance. We see it's a book about uh, the tension between the prophet and God, between us and God. And so again, this tension between Jonah, who says, I don't really want to listen to you, God, and so he runs away. He hops on a boat, tries to flee. As we get in the book, we'll notice, obviously he couldn't, and, and we'll see how Jonah knew he couldn't eventually get away, but he tries nevertheless, and we got God calling him to do something that he doesn't want to do. And, and again, all this will culminate in, in Jonah trying to be taught repentance. Again, whether or not he actually learns repentance uh, is yet to be seen. And so when we look at this call, what we see in this, and especially as we look at our own lives, is this tension between God's call and our call, where, where God comes to us and sometimes he says, hey, listen, I need you to do A, B, or C. I'm calling you to do this, that, or the other. And that tension is say, well, is that really what I want to be doing? And the thing is, a lot of times we're going to be like Jonah, you know, God's going to say, I need you to go and, and do this, talk to this person, uh, be involved in this activity, go and bless these people, go and preach the word here, uh, serve these people in this capacity, you need to suffer and sacrifice in this way for my kingdom. And again, we're going to be tempted to be like Jonah and say, I don't want to do that because I like my life as it is. And again, whether it's big stuff like running away from a bigger calling like Jonah or even the daily smaller stuff where we run away from, from God's calling to be holy as he is holy, to live as he has called us to live. The beauty of the book of Jonah is that we see a pursuing God, that, that even though Jonah tries to run away, and of course we will see is he's always unsuccessful, but God's still going after him. Uh, God's still pursuing. God still says, hey, I've got something that I need you to do for my kingdom, for my glory, for the good of these people in Nineveh. 
and eventually you're going to be doing it because this is what I've called you to do. And so we see the, the power, the pursuing nature of God, the, the power uh, of God's grace that, as we're going to see throughout the book, that even though he should have just given up on Jonah, he never does. You know, at no point does God ever say, I'm done with you, I've had enough of you. And so again, as we watch or go through the book, as hopefully you continue to watch uh, the upcoming videos, uh, keep that in mind, that, that God's always pursuing, that, that he calls, there is this tension. We live in this tension, but God is always there. You know, even when we're trying to run away, because he is always shy, trying to show to us his great love, his great mercy, not only for us, but for the people in this world. So again, I hope you're blessed not only by this introduction, uh, this first look at the call to Jonah, but again, everything that we're going to look at afterwards uh, as Jonah uh, is used by God uh, for the people of Nineveh and for us as well. So uh, God be with you uh, as you live in his calling and uh, live in his grace, live in his presence each and every day.